So I now believe that prayer is important, but how do I get to a place where it's impactful for my life and something takes place? It's powerful what's happening and I feel connected to the Lord. I'm going to discuss that in this video, and this video is part of a larger series of videos. If you go to our channel, Bethel Pittsburgh, on YouTube, go under playlist, you'll find a playlist titled The Disciple, and that is a, a series of videos on how to grow in our faith in Jesus Christ, and it's set in category order, so you'll find one of the categories, you find that by the title of the videos, one of the categories is, is personal relationship with the Lord, developing that and this one is under the subcategory of prayer. So I've done one video on prayer to this point, and it starts with the understanding that of what, how prayer is important, that, that a lot of outcomes take place when I pray, as well as it is my lifeline, it is my actual co connection with the Lord that is a part of why I'm born again, is because of that connection I have with, with Him, and that's lived out flesh lived out through through prayer so but but i'm in the place where i'm good with what prayer is i just don't know how to establish that power uh, powerful impact of my prayer life and feeling of connection with the lord so i'm going to walk through psalm 42 and i think a lot of the psalms actually will give us direction on how to do this uh, it gives us, if you study Psalms, you'll see there, there's almost a basic formula of interacting with the Lord that results in, in a powerful experience before the Lord. And Psalm 42 is going to be a, a demonstration of that. So first three verses of Psalm 42 reads this way. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. For my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night while they say to me all the day long where is your god and so it starts with i, I want to have this connection but i don't feel like i have this connection and you see that where where is your god do you see that expressed here in this psalm and this is in, in many ways the the formula of the example for us in Psalms of prayer is I come to God open and transparent before him. I come to him expressing what's on my mind. A lot of people think I have to start out with getting things right and being having the right attitude and, and we wanna land there for sure. But that's not how I start out. I start out with whatever feelings, emotions, thoughts, concerns, excitements, whatever is going on, I come and deliver that to the Lord. Think of it like in a relationship with any other person. When I come to talk to people, it's what's on my mind, what's going on in my life. And so I need to approach that with God, make this more fluid, and just uh, see him as a friend, even though he's sovereign, he is Lord, and there's a distinctive difference. But even Jesus says that he, that, that he calls us his friend. So and I think it's just to indicate the, the fluidity of this relationship, the, not casualness, but the, the openness of this relationship. So I, I come to him, and if something's bothering me, I tell him something's bothering me. If I'm upset with something, if I'm concerned about something, if I'm not feeling it, then I tell him I'm not feeling it. And I just lay that all out there. And then verse 4 says, These things I remember as I pour out my soul. Okay, so there's this, I am laying everything out. I'm exposing who I am before God. I'm being intimate and open with him. And then the remainder of verse 4, how I would go with the throng and how, and let me start over, how, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude keeping festival and so he's describing his past like i used to be good this this used to be okay and it's not okay right now and so i'm, I'm expressing that to god that that i'm not in an okay space right now and he continues to add to that in verse five he says why are you cast down O my soul and why are you in turmoil within me hope in god for i shall again praise him my salvation so He's, he's expressing that I'm not good, 
I'm cast down. I'm down. I'm, I'm not good. So he's that's what that's what he's communicating. God, I'm not okay. And then what starts to happen is we start to see a little pep talk happening, a little correction of thought. Why are you this way? But hope in God. Like, what, why are you in this position? And, and so I'm. What's happening is I'm exploring with God. Now I'm, the hope is that God is involved in guiding this conversation. But I, I'm talking this out. And because I'm identifying and naming and, and discussing with, with the Lord openly what's happening in my thought life and my feelings and the way I'm viewing things and what my objectives are and my motives are, and that's all getting laid out there. And then now I'm thinking them through with a, a God orientation and, and I'm correcting my thinking because now I'm saying, okay, that, that's what I've been thinking. That's not good. That's how I've been feeling. That's not good. And I want to bring some correction here in that and as this moment is taking place verse 7 says uh, well and i skipped verse 6 but it's just more of that same of of that corrective interaction with myself verse 7 says it says deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls all your breakers and your waves have gone over me verse not verse 8 by day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. So what happens is this deep connection begins to happen where? In talking through my life, my thoughts, my feelings, the way I'm viewing things, my expectations, and I'm going through that with God. And, and as I'm, and just think of that in a human relationship sense. If I'm being ultimate, if I'm being intimate and vulnerable and open and transparent with somebody and talking about things that I have a lot of emotions and thoughts about and they're, they're responding in a positive way, in some kind of positive way, I connect with that person. And a lot of times we don't connect with God because we're formulaic in the sense of, you know, I rattle off my request and, and I make sure I pray for important things and I I'm asking to get kind of in alignment with his will, but I'm not actually bringing me into this conversation. And, and a relationship, a healthy relationship is reciprocal. It's both people uh, engaging in the relationship. And so I need to engage in the relationship by expressing all of this stuff. And the result is I end up connecting with the Lord. And then it, it, it moves forward. Uh, verse 9 and 10. So he... he he expresses his concerns. He gets some intervention that makes him feel better. Uh, it's not a necessarily a change of circumstances. It's just thinking this through with God now makes me in a, land in a better place. But then there's a pullback in verse 9. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? So he's, he's still thinking, still I have these circumstances that haven't changed and, and I don't feel good about them. Verse 10, as with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? So I still have these circumstances that, that are happening to me and I still don't feel good about them. Uh, even the start of verse 11, why are you cast down, oh my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me, still, still indicates that idea that I'm, I'm not okay. I still don't feel good about this. And, and I think sometimes people, when they press in the prayer, they get it to start, and they press in, and they say, I don't feel good. This is what I'm concerned. I'm not happy about this, and I'm concerned about this, and, and they express those things, and something happens, and, and, and then, then they start to move in the right direction, and then they feel that pullback, and they, well, I'm supposed to stay positive, so I'm just going to pretend that didn't happen and just plow ahead. That's not what should happen. If I'm not good, and it's not that it's okay to be anxious, it's not, okay, it's not that it's okay to be self-centered even, or to distrust God, but if that's where I am, I need to, I need to bring that back into the light and say, that, okay, you know, I'm, I'm not good, okay, now, now okay, I feel, uh, you help me out, God, I feel good, you know, you know, I'm still not good. And, and we just, we express that to God, and the result is what happens is we, we land on this pep talk again of, of it's out there, it's named, it's admitted, and, and it's confessed, and I'm thinking it through with God's guidance, and, and where I land on is hope in God, in the verse 11, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. So I get this pep talk again, and then I shall praise him, I shall worship him. 
And this is what happens. And this is how you feel this connection. This is where prayer becomes powerful, and this is where something happens, and it becomes transformative. I come to God with all my issues and, and all the things I'm wrestling with, and I lay it out on the table with emotions and all, and I think it through, and I land on a better space. And then I'm feeling okay, and, and I'm, I'm getting empowered, and, and, and I'm starting to feel connected to the Lord. And then, then I start to struggle again. I pull that back in, and, and what happens is, is I feel this deep connection. We saw that word there. I feel this deep connection with the Lord, and I have this deep relationship. But that in and of itself is powerful and makes prayer meaningful, and it and has a purpose, and it's going to drive me to want to enter into that more. And then, then I land on, because of that connection, because of what happened, because of what, what, what the, the power that was in that, uh, then I begin to admire God and, and, and adore Him and, and love Him and have, feel affection towards Him. And that just uh, extends out into praise and worship. And, and that's kind of the flow of the way this works, as we see demonstrated in Psalm 42, as well as a lot of the Psalms demonstrate that kind of experience. And so if you want to establish a deep connection with the Lord, Walk this through with the Lord this way routinely, and you'll start to see uh, powerful things take place in your life. And actually, at the end of that is, I walk out of praying feeling assured, confident, secure, motivated to walk in God's will and plan for my life. So I, I hope that that helps move you forward. If you have any questions or any feedback on the content of this video, leave that in the comments. I'd, I'd be glad to hear from you. If you would like to grow in person in your faith and you live in the Pittsburgh area, we'd love for you to join us at 2501 State Street, Bethel Assembly of God, Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m., Sundays at 10 a.m. Or if you don't and you'd like to join us through live streaming, we stream our Sunday services live at 10 a.m. on YouTube, Bethel Pittsburgh, or on Facebook. But may God richly bless you.